this man. <laughs> oh. It's a bit of whimsy in people's otherwise grim lives. A cow made of butter. How? What else do you require? Can I interest you in a butter television? It was a working television set molded. Made of butter, <laughs> sir. I'd like to see you make such a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the butter TV worked. So now you got to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a pig. Sorry, I don't have a picture of the butter cow. Oh, yeah. Well, I assumed everyone would know what the butter cow looks like. Everyone knows what the butter cow looks like, but of course, I think... Everyone actually... in this room has made love to the butter cow. <laughs> uh, you want me to just run through these, Will? Yes. My favorite thing at the fair was the livestock barns, right? We saw cows, horses, sheep, piggies, and a few kitchen chickens. chickens, yeah. Uh, what, I, what I like the best, though, is that there is a, uh, there's a giant uh, building called the Swine Barn. And I thought it was great, finally, to uh, meet the people who comment on our Reddit. <laughs> Hit that gambo. Hit that gambo. That's a gambo. Got him. Uh, this big boy right here is named uh, Brutus. He's one of the uh, giant hogs that were available for viewing. So basically what I learned from the, uh, the livestock area, when I looked at all of the beautiful cows and their sort of like big gentle eyes, I was like, fuck, Morrissey is right. God damn it. <laughs> and when I say he's right, I mean about everything. So yeah, uh, why don't you play the uh, the, the hog video? Oh, here we yeah, go. let's look at, look at this. Is our boy Brutus. Look at that. Hi, ah. my name is Brutus. I'd like to know why the episode is late. <laughs> Pigs are so just disturbingly human. Their skin is very hu similar to human skin. They are the most similar anatomically to humans. Going to the lives, going to the pig barn is like visiting John Wayne Gacy's crawl space. <laughs> For real. It's like, pet them before you eat them, folks. What was it, like, what was it, one, one, of, the, one of the animals that, like, name, buttercup, purpose, purpose meat! <laughs> it said, yes, name, buttercup, purpose, meat! But you know what? In a moment, a bit of me was uh, jealous of her. To so clearly and unquestionably know your purpose... To be able to go through life knowing I am meat. Not have to wonder, oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Should I go to back to grad school? No, meat. So yeah, to conclude uh, our, uh, my, my first day's observations of the Iowa State Fair, of you know, uh, the cattle call of candidates and the actual cattle, and the, just the crowd in general here at the fair, is I would say like Iowa, I said this the other day, Iowa, you really hate incurable diseases and you want to do anything you can to fight them because I, I thought like basically half of the people on Friday at the fair looked like they spent every weekend doing charity 5Ks to cure Alzheimer's, cancer, you know, Parkinson's, and all, all of the, all the, the real maladies that afflict the human race and the other half of the people there were actively suffering from all of them. <laughs> Time is the real reign of Castamere. <laughs> so that, that closes out Friday, right? Friday was great. We were pumped. It's my birthday the next day. And then... <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's the beginning of his birthday year. Yeah. It's my, it's my <laughs> birthday year, guys. Come on, be nice. Uh, so, yeah, so we end Friday. We're feeling good. Here in Iowa, we're making sure we're, we're seeing the candidates. We're fucking, we're loving, we're having a great time. I wake up Saturday morning and tragedy struck. We woke up to the news. You never really know what you truly love until you don't have it anymore. And it was like, I woke up, I checked my phone, I, I see the text. Yes, yes, that's who we're talking about. 
I see the text and I'm like, damn, I only talked to him like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and now he's gone forever. Fuck. Cast a real pall over our Saturday, I gotta say. Feeling like pure shit, just want him back. So, so depressed, so depressed. <laughs> blessed, blessed. So depressed that we couldn't even make it to the fairgrounds in time to see Kamala Harris or Tim Ryan speak. Yeah, that's too bad, but you know, we needed a proper uh, morning period. We needed to spend the morning just looking out the window at the rain, <laughs> thinking about Jeffrey. So we get there. The first candidate of the day on the soapbox is Amy Klobuchar, Amy Two Targaryen. Drop that beat, DJ. Drop that beat. The mother of dragons. Uh, I don't. I don't have a picture of Amy. <laughs> we don't. We don't have a picture of Amy. She's the mother of dragons, folks. She will come for her birthright with fire and blood and staplers and binders and fucking pumps and whatever else it takes to get it through you people's fucking heads that this is a professional fucking office. So we saw, we saw a Klobuchar at the soapbox and I gotta say, really not making our tragic day any funner or better in any way. She did not come out like any decent human being would and say, holy shit, they killed him. <laughs> I would have spread my support to anybody who came up that day on Saturday and first thing out of their mouth was, holy shit, they fucking killed him. I would support them, whoever it was, to the end of the earth, but not a single one of those motherfuckers had the guts to even say that. Settle down. Okay. So, uh, you know, again, I wish I could tell you more about her uh, stump speech, but like all of these, I just sort of It like... was almost as good as what Matt's saying. <laughs> it was like, uh, you put Iowa nice. Well, there's Minnesota nice. <laughs> of, of what little I remembered, she talked about how she uh, launched her campaign in Minnesota in the middle of a fucking snowstorm, and there was like... Uh, you know, snow piling up on her head. Oh, and interesting. Was, oh, cool. And then she yeah. was like, you know, well, it's, it's hot here today, so is, isn't that crazy? Yeah, isn't it ironic? Time moves forward. What a trip. <laughs> I, I, you know, I forgot everything she said because I think as Virgil pointed out, she was talking in like a tone and frequency that only other Midwesterners can hear. Right, it's like those whistles that only teenagers can hear because of the frequency. But for mi only Midwesterners can understand when she talks. For us, uh, uh, sophisticates from the East Coast, we just hear total silence. Well, as a Midwesterner, I could hear her. I was able to... I... Hey, he's from, he's from Wisconsin, okay? Calm down. <laughs> boo! Boo! Yeah, it sure does suck to have access to actual bodies of water. <laughs> no, I understood what she was saying, but the content still was absolute just pablum. But I, what I enjoyed is even though she was just talking about, you know, reaching across the aisle bullshit, she had a very specific powerful energy in that she felt like somebody's aunt at the wedding who grabbed the microphone <laughs> and she was not supposed to be talking. And I was like, oh, Christ. Diane's at it again. And so that was fun. And if anyone's wondering, the uncle equivalent of that is Jay Inslee. So we got to the press scrum right afterwards. And again, we could ask some questions. Uh, and we'll take the reins on this one. We had talked to uh, Dave Weigel earlier that day, who'd been covering all the candidates. And he said uh, that the press scrums we missed, uh, the press corps had Epstein on the brain. They had been asking all the candidates about Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, honestly, uh, the hunters have the sense now. <laughs> I know we've been, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're getting in that, in that brain space. And we really thought, you know, oh, if we go up and we ask all the candidates about Jeffrey Epstein, we're going to seem like, you know, weirdo conspiracy theorist cranks. But then, like, actual this people... This is not a town hall, from, sir. Yeah, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Please but shut actual up. people from ABC News and uh, BuzzFeed and GooGooGaga.com were asking her about Jeffrey Epstein, and so did our friend Will. Yes, I got the second question into Klobuchar after the, uh, you know, the Des Moines Register, you know, 
They cheat here. They make it so that they get to ask. They're lying to Moines Register. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck the register. Uh, no, and I, I asked Klobuchar, uh, do you support uh, like opening up an ongoing investigation into the Epstein case? Because he's a senator. You can do that shit yeah. when you're a senator. So, and then like uh, someone was like, boo, or whatever. And she was like, no, no, no. Or, like, you know, it's a reasonable question. This is like a real issue. And she started launching into a kind of like, uh, sort of half non-committal answer about how, like, yes, there are many questions we raised. We need to get to the bottom of this. And we need to get to the bottom of this, blah, blah, blah. The answer blah. was no. And then, and then Matt yells over my shoulder, will you hold hearings? And she gives, she gives him a little hand motion like this and then looks at him, and I caught the look, and it was fire and blood. <laughs> she was just like, get me a stapler to brain this fucking oaf with. <laughs> I was feeling like Varys. I was about to get fucking roasted. <laughs> oh, I come think on! Paid attention. Come Fine. on! I'm sorry. Dude, yeah, get the fuck out of here. No, I'm I'm sorry. We shouldn't have said it. <laughs> So Amy gave a, uh, you know, she addressed the question, but gave kind of a, a non-answer. I, no, we bullshit answer. It made us more depressed. This was the utter nadir of, of our entire trip because we had planned to be here for several days, and frankly, uh, after losing our best friend, uh, and our biggest Patreon supporter, and <laughs> this bullshit Amy fucking Klobuchar answer, we just were like, fuck it, let's just go home. Forget it. And then I was like, no, no, let's just see the next candidate. You know, let's let's just see, let's just see the next candidate. So we were feeling like shit, feeling bored, feeling depressed, feeling mournful, feeling like there's no hope in politics. If they could just whack out Epstein in full view of everyone with no repercussions, why do you think an election's going to change anything? You know, just feeling really, really down. But then, then, then we saw a man, not just a man, an admiral. Oh. <laughs> The yeah. Admiral showed up. Admiral Joe Sestak. You will Admiral salute a Joe. commanding officer on deck. Salute him, sir. <laughs> salute this man. Look at that guy. This man. Okay, so. This he... man is raw power. Look at that. Look at the power behind that shirt choice. So immediately I see this guy, and I'm like, damn, he looks like Sam Watterson. And I swear to God... I swear to God, he had like one of his two actual campaign workers goes, wow, that's great. I'm a big newsroom fan. And I swear to God.